this is a really exciting day for us. Not only are we unveiling our little baby James to the world, but it culminates the end of a year of very intense work from a lot of people who have been flung together from all across the globe to produce something that we believe is really, truly special. Modern businesses can individualize communication as a way of making relationships more meaningful, but it's not cost effective, it's not operationally efficient. As modern digital businesses, we face, we all face a similar challenge, which is how do you communicate and build meaningful relationships with consumers at scale and at cost. As audiences and their expectations change, the line between hygiene, progress, and innovation becomes ever more blurred. And so as businesses that are trying to maintain a competitive advantage, how do we keep up with this? I think the reality is, is that most businesses um, don't really do this. I think this is what I like to call CRM nirvana. Uh, where essentially you're, you know who you're talking to, you know what you want to say, and you know how you're going to say it in a way that is going to be meaningful for the individual uh, with which you're communicating. And so really this is all about knowing your customer in a very deep way. Uh, so knowing that actually Dave is different from Cheryl and that one of them is going to prefer content about style and the other one is going to prefer content about business and that they're going to want to receive that content at a certain time in a certain format. That's why we've created James. James, as you've heard, is a collaborative partnership with Twipe and partially funded by the Google Digital News Innovation Fund and it is the technology which is allowing us to really meet that challenge with gusto. This is more than just content recommendation. It is content recommendation on steroids, if you like, uh, where it's not just about saying, do you know, we know what you want, but we're saying we know when you want it and how you want it delivered. What was the goal of James? So the project goal, as we've defined it when we started this project, and the aim that we had with this project is to accelerate the net subscriber's growth by individualizing the way that we distribute the content of the edition through self-learning algorithms and a bespoke um, artificial intelligence. So we worked on personalized time, personalized content, personalizing the format or which format works best for which person. Um, and we also looked at frequency. In terms of a few metrics of what, what actually happened throughout the past, let's say, 10 months, more than 14 million emails were sent to more than 100,000 subscribers of the Times. We have distributed content, so if you talk about presentation of content, we've explored six different propositions. We have worked, tested, built, um, and put live 11 different models. So we're gonna share a few of the learnings of the project. One that we're particularly proud of, I think through the ongoing of the project, we've been able to, James has been able to interact with 70% of the subscribers. What that means, that means that there is indeed uh, an audience that can be served to whom we can serve content through artificial intelligence. About 40% of those people have interacted with more than 30% of the emails uh, within James. We found that the biggest impact that James generates is actually for the low to medium engaged subscribers. This is great news because we know that this is a group that's on the mind of, um, of many newspaper publishers. And also one very interesting one is if we talk about 70% people that were interacting with James, the rest of the people, they're actually people you might not want to bother. Um, these are people who had no interaction or people who opted out. So we went to look into the people, for example, who opted out and we saw that those are predominantly among the high engaged people. We saw a reduction in time to market from on average 90 days to 10. And this was driven in a huge part because we had dedicated teams and resource. But I think more than that, uh, you hear a lot uh, about the popularity of cross-functional teams these days. I certainly was a little skeptical about this at first, but you can hear it from me. I mean, I'm definitely a convert. You will have all seen this stat on the tables, but uh, in our test groups, we saw 49% less churn uh, that was observed for people who interacted with James. So this is huge for us. How do brands really build meaningful relationships with consumers. I think individualization can provide a powerful return on investment, and overall it will mean you have lower OPEX. What a whirlwind. I can't believe we've achieved it. We've delivered some incredible results. The team have been 
amazing um, and I'm really excited about the future. What we've done I think is groundbreaking for not just our industry but other industries. I think we're still scratching the surface in terms of uh, where James can go. Now that you have kind of technology that allows you to personalise and even kind of individualise the distribution of that content, it makes it really powerful. So you have a core edition and then everyone can access it in a different way and I think that's going to be a real game changer for, for the Times and the Sunday Times. Thank you.